morning. Good morning. This is Jeremy Man Speaks, and we're here with J Man's Ed Talks number six. We're going to call this Instagram predictions for the future. We're here with Chris Stager and Rebecca Donatelli, IG3 in the house. So, how's everybody doing today? Let's start with introductions. Awesome. Good. Go ahead, Rebecca. Hi, I'm Rebecca Donatelli. I am in Cleveland, Ohio. I'm a team lead of the Rebecca Donatelli team, and I'm with McDowell Homes. Instagramming it up today. Instagramming it up. Love it. Chris? <laughs> Not, uh, I'm Chris Stager. I'm with uh, Century 21 Pinnacle here in Bethlehem, PA, Christmas City, for all of you that don't know. Uh, we had said earlier, it's the only place to be at Christmas other than North Pole, but... Uh, I'm going into my seventh year in real estate and um, loving every minute of it. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Let me see. I'm going to make sure I'm looking at the live broadcast up on my screen here. For some reason, Chris is the only one that's coming up on the screen because let's see. Here. I go there. I go here. Hmm. All right. Let's keep going. So this is Jeremiah, J. Mamman, and like I said, we're going to get started in the beginning of how we get started, folks. How do we get started with Instagram? Uh, let's start with Chris, since he's the one that's on the screen right now, <laughs> about how, how you get started with Instagram. And because uh, you know, I think that's the most daunting task for some folks. They, maybe I just started my account. And then do they go business and personal? That's another question that I got before we started. Sure. Um, well, and the first thing is to start because, you know, everybody's just afraid of it. So you got to start, you got to start somewhere and everybody starts with, you know, if you have one follower, if that one follower turns into, you know, it could be your mom. I mean, who cares? No. Uh, you, you, you got to start somewhere, right? Um, so that would be the first thing. And, you know, one of the things is, you know, I, I, I had a personal page for a little while and I switched it over to a business. Uh, page, you know, and I was kind of wanted to do both. And I said, you know what? Two years into it, I said, let's, let's put it all together. You know, let's have, um, let's just show people my life, uh, you know, good, the bad, the ugly, you know, whatever it is, my, my children, my pets, my family. And, um, that's when it turned around and exploded. So, um, for, for that, I would say, you know, just business and personal mix them, put them together. What about you, Rebecca? Um, so I started also with just a personal page and um, I started the business page about a year into my business. I kind of started it as just a hobby. I love photography and I love real estate. So it just made sense to do something separate. I had no intentions of it actually being a main source of business for me or any sort of branding. Um, I do still have a separate personal page that is private um, for several reasons. Safety is probably the biggest one. And I just post family stuff on there. Um, I post some personal stuff on my real estate one, but for safety reasons, I just keep them separate. Um, but I've had this one now. Actually, it was July 4th of 2016. I remember the day because I didn't actually have any appointments and I was having a barbecue. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it, it's just kind of taken off from there. Nice. So talk a little bit more about this. I like that you said mentioned about safety, about realtor safety, because that's so important these days about keeping it personal and private. So just expand on that a little bit. Yeah. So you can change your settings on your Instagram. You can make it a private page where if people want to follow you, they have to request you um, and you do have to accept them. So if I get any follow requests on my personal page, I, I do make sure I know them. Um, for business purposes, you definitely want to keep it public. Um, if you hashtag any of your posts, which um, I encourage, and I'm sure Chris does too, to add hashtags to all of your posts, they can only search those if you are public. So if you add hashtags and you have a private account, nobody can find them. Um, so you do want to keep it public. People can follow you. And people now can follow hashtags. So it's kind of cool, if, even if they don't follow you personally, your posts will still come up. Um, so I do keep it separate, you know, especially being a younger woman, I just like to, you know, make sure that I'm keeping things as safe as I can. Um, so that's why I've chosen to do that. And like I said, I still post some personal things on my real estate page so people can get to know me as more than just a realtor. Um, yeah. But I, I, there's a line at which I won't post certain things and keep them on my 
private one. Excellent. So let's start with like daily best practices. Cause I think I, and I, I talked to Chris about this. I've talked to you about this, Rebecca. Like I think people come or people that are watching right now, they're waiting for that silver bullet. What's that one thing, that one thing, just please tell me that one thing that I can do that I can get to a hundred thousand followers by tomorrow. And, and like the answer is there isn't one thing. And I want to hear from kind of both of you of your thoughts and how, how to get there, how to, how to, grow your audience well Chris, I, yeah i mean it's it's not overnight um and i you know i'm i can't see the facebook so i don't know who's who's on here but uh, i'll give you a good example uh lisa sanders in in the poconos you know she's she came to my one of my instagram classes um two years ago the tech talk and she basically in two years doubled her followers which is phenomenal um, it, it's not an overnight thing. It take, it's, it's progress. I mean, I've been on it for five years now, maybe five and a half years. Um, and I don't know if anybody remembers five and a half years, but you could see everything in, in, in order when it was posted. So, and it's not like that anymore, but you just have to be able to, um, you know, the hashtags are a big deal. You know, you want to mix them though. You want to have some hyper, hyper local ones. Um, as well as, you know, if you're going into a business, geotag that business. Um, so people who are looking at that, you know, just we're at a restaurant and now they want to see everybody that's at the restaurant or whatever the case may be. And then maybe they follow you at that point. Um, and then who knows two years from now, maybe they're want to buy a house and you know, you just, you just never really know, but it's not an overnight thing. You have to, you have to work at it. You have to comment on other people's things. You have to, you know, like other people's stuff. Um, you know, just a relationship, you know, try to create a, a 60 second relationship, uh, with that for the most part. <laughs> I could do that. A 60 second, there's there a 60 <laughs> second client. <laughs> I love that. So Rebecca, same kind of same question for you. Would How do you feel about it? Yeah. Um, first of all, can you see me yet? <laughs> Am I and, here? No, it should, it should should be okay. Yeah, try that. Okay. Either way, I look kind of pale on this camera, so it's okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I'm going to Florida tomorrow, so. Um, but no, I would totally agree with Chris. And like you said, we've kind of talked about this before where I talk to people about Instagram and I tell them everything I'm doing and then they come up to me after and they're like, well, where is that magic formula that I'm going to grow my followers tomorrow and I'm going to get all kinds of leads? Um, and I loved what you said where it's kind of like weight loss. So is there a secret formula for weight loss? It's right. diet and exercise. There's no like secret magic thing that you do. And then the next day you're down 50 pounds. So it's the same type of thing with Instagram, you know, consistency, um, engagement is huge. I make it a point to be on there every single day. Um, and if you just keep doing it and give them some good content, um brand yourself in a certain way that people recognize you and your posts they'll want to keep following you um they'll tell their friends about you um you just keep that up and that's pretty much it just keep it going i encourage my agents to do that as well um every almost every day if not every day if if they can so how much time would you say that you spend doing that um, daily. I mean, I, I block off a certain period of time where I'll just sit there and, and not do anything except go on my Instagram and engage with people. Um, and I'll include like Facebook in that time too. But I also try to go on there if I have a little bit of a break at some point during the day, maybe in between an appointment or a showing or something, um, that I can kind of scroll through and just engage with people. Because Chris, like you said, it's not just anymore. They've changed the algorithms to where it's not just per time. So right. you kind of have to go through and make sure you're hitting everyone because something that someone posted at five minutes ago might not be at the top of your Instagram mm -hmm. thing. So you want to make sure that you kind of go through. Um, so I go through as much as I can during the day if I have the time. Okay, Chris, what about you? How much? Because I think that everybody says, I don't have the time, which is it's the biggest BS in real estate for anything that people say. But how much time yeah. do you spend on it? And is it, I is get yelled it, at all. The, I get yelled at all the time uh, for being on my phone too much. For, even this? my kids tell me, "Put the phone down," and my kids are telling me that. Um, <laughs> so, but it's you know uh, probably I'd say a, a good hour to two hours a day. I mean, 
most of it's in the morning when you know it's either very very early or it's very very late but you know and, and the late people that i talk to you know a lot of my followers are not you know they're across the pond so um you know it's it's a different audience at whatever times but um i'm three to four i'm posting three to four times a day sometimes i don't get to each one but it's at least three to four times specific times that when i go back and look at my insights you know i know what for me what the best time is for me to post um and for what i'm posting so and then when it comes to stories basically whatever i'm doing throughout the day that's you know that's not included into the post but the stories are just what's going on throughout the day some days i may only have one some days i may have 20. i mean it all depends on what's going on so then rebecca that, that's kind of a good progression into stories then also like engagement like engaging with your audience I think a lot of people don't even understand what that means. Like just breaking it down to its most basic level, engaging with people. What does that mean? But then also like your stories, what am I posting? Am I going just listed, just sold all day? Or what What am I talking about? Yeah, so, um, yeah. so I'll start with the story um, part of it. First of all, yeah, don't just do sold and listed, you will get people to probably unfollow you. Um, out of all my different types of posts, anything that I post that is sold or listed, I get the least amount of engagement with. And by engagement, I mean people liking the post, they're gonna comment on it, maybe they'll send me a message about it. Um, so if you, don't take the time to do this, but if you do ever go through my whole Instagram feed from when I started until now, you'll notice that I used to post a lot of pictures with sold all over them. And now I barely post any. And the reason for that is not because I'm not selling any houses, but because I just didn't get the engagement that I was looking for. Um, so I'll still include that from time to time because I want to show people that me and my team are selling. But um, people love the kind of behind the scenes stuff. So um, I drink a ton of coffee. I'm already on number two for the day and it's 19. <laughs> um, so coffee just ends up in a lot of my posts, not on purpose, but just because I always have it. So I've kind of become known as this Cleveland realtor who loves her coffee. And it's not intentional, but it's a great branding thing because people will remember you by that. Um, yeah. So they love the behind the scenes stuff. Um, again, personal stuff, like Chris said, people want to get to know you personally, not just as someone who sells houses. Um, I travel to speak. Um, I've been with Jamie a couple of times, so people get to see that side of it. Um, and as far as the stories go, the stories, it's kind of the same thing Chris said. Some days I'll post one to two things on my story. Other days it's all day long. Um, it's great for that behind the scenes stuff, especially things that you might not want to post as an actual post you want to show people that what you're doing um maybe you're at a photo shoot or i'll post with my team or um i'm all into motivational quotes i send one quote every morning to my team to get them going for the day so i'll throw one of those on there um and you can include engagement in your stories so you can just like i think we all did this morning ask a question and you can get people to respond you can do a poll do you like this kitchen is it nice yes or no um, there's a lot of cool ways to get people involved as far as the stories go too. Okay. I like that. So Chris, I guess in the, in the same, same question, cause I, yeah. we have two of you on because it's two different perspectives, male, female, different mm -hmm. parts of the country. Like there's just to know that there isn't a wrong way as long as you're doing it. Like you're both successful at it and it's great to hear both sides of the story or two uh, sides. Well, well, I exploit my children. Um, <laughs> So, you know, and I, and, and I, I mean, it, it is what it is. Um, you know, I, we, we, and actually we're going to transfer into that actually. Um, my little guy, um, Parker, he, uh, you know, both my kids, I mean, my, my oldest one was in a, in an Instagram post this morning. Um, my little guy, I have people that come up to me everywhere and go, love your Instagram your 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 little ones taking over your instagram page and i'm like so that got me thinking well maybe we're gonna have to you know we're gonna have to start you utilizing him a little bit more um right. so <laughs> he's gonna have his own his own thing going on but uh you know we're gonna start doing market updates he's gonna start doing market updates for me so the videos we're gonna start doing is 
my little guy is going to do the market updates. Nice. So I, I can't awesome. wait to see what kind of track, what kind of traction that gets. But you know, for me, it's, it's them. Um, I mean, when I'm walking into appointments, you know, and, and people are like, Oh, I love your family, you know, love your kids. And it's done from there. Um, you know, it's, it's a done deal, but, um, <laughs> I, you know, I, yeah, I exploit my, I exploit my children <laughs> uh, and, and, and my wife, you know, that's, they're, they're the main part of my, my page, but, um, you know, that's pretty much it. Uh, just go with what works, you know, what people want. They're going to tell you what they want, um, just by their engagement. Um, so that's, that's one of the biggest things, you know, if, if they want to see them, then that's what I'm going to give them. Uh, it just, that's pretty much it. Okay, so exploiting children. <laughs> anyway, no, but I, I, I back, it brings it back to like your core values, what you really care about. And I, I, I always use the quote, like people don't care how much you know, so they know how much you care because it's so true in everything that we do. Like you can see that you care about family. And if I have a family and I'm going to buy or sell real estate, who would I rather work with, right? Somebody right. to identify with and... and that mine. Um, so I, I think I think that's key. There's a couple of good points there. Let's let's talk about video a little bit because I know you both are doing a little bit, right? I mean, Rebecca, tell us what you're doing. Um, to be honest, I haven't quite explored the video um part of it. I. I don't think I've ever actually posted a video on my feed. I like more um, of the actual posts. And then if I do want to attach a video to it, I'll add it in my story and you can do the, you can swipe up and it'll take you to a link. Um, uh -huh. So I'll do that. I did recently talk with my team. We want to start getting into that IGTV thing, which is a newer thing. And I also haven't really explored that yet, but um, that seems to be something that people really like, but I do, if I do any videos on Instagram, I do them on my story for some reason. I just haven't really included any on my feed. I'd like to start doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, I just haven't quite yet. So with the swipe up though, that's a feature that's not available until you get to a certain amount of followers, right? Yeah, so I actually just found that out. I didn't know that it was only for certain people. <laughs> um, I, when I went to Rebar Camp in Dayton, I was speaking there about Instagram, and um, someone came up to me and they're like, "Oh yeah, you know, it's cool. You have you're able to do the swipe up feature." And I'm like, "What are you talking about? You've never done that." Well, no, you have to have ten thousand followers to be able to do it. So I actually just found that out. <laughs> um, but it is cool if you do follow anyone that has. Um, that type of following because you can add a link in it. So like if I have, if I do have a new listing, I'll throw it in my story and I'll swipe up and I'll take them to the link of the actual listing. Um, I'm kind of, oh, I'm not frozen anymore. Okay. Um, so it's kind of cool. I, I added a link for this today. Um, I just got um, asked to be on Women's Council of Realtors Instagram event. So I, I added a swipe up. So it is a really cool feature. I didn't know until recently it was for <laughs> only certain people with um, 10,000 plus followers. But 10,000. So there's a goal. Get to 10,000 folks and you <laughs> swipe up. Okay. There's, yeah. so many there's so many possibilities with that. I mean, you can pay for that. And it's pretty expensive <laughs> to be able to do that if you don't have it but um yeah it's a huge advantage to have that swipe up because you can take them anywhere from there mm -hmm. totally agree so chris are you using video or you plan and do you do some igtv don't you or i i do you know a lot of the a lot of the facebook live stuff that i do i will upload to igtv it takes a little while but you know we you know we'll either upload it to igtv then we're going to upload it to youtube i mean there's a lot of things that we do with the video um we just really started to get into video more and most of my feed will change to that yeah. you know but some of the video i have is is actually reposted videos from like my network group or you know something that another business community that i'm doing i'm sharing their video um and tagging everything you know some of them are funny posts you know i have a i have a cousin in la who's a music artist and you know they babysat my little one and you know you'll be able to see but they did a video with him that is 
surprised it didn't go viral yet. But, um, you know, just videos like that, I'm for the most part. I mean, it's, but we're getting into that. Um, but again, I don't want to sit there and show just home tour videos either. Um, maybe one here and there, but it's going to be mainly of, that's why I like to share the videos of other businesses. Right. Highlighting other people, especially yeah. if you're seen as somebody who specializes in an area, you know, like you are the, uh, the high, the high Valley real estate, yeah. right? Yep. Um, so IGTV, where do we want to go with this? We actually have some questions. Let me, let's talk about some of the questions. So Terry Dillon, let's, I'm going to bring up, bring it up on the screen here. She has a question. Can you schedule them out in advance so that they post at a specific date and time? Hmm. Yes. <laughs> you, you, you can, you can schedule uh, all your social media posts. Um, there's a couple websites, Hootsuite. I mean, there's, there's a bunch that you can, um, I think there's one called later, um, right. believe it or not, that you can just, you know, sit down on a Sunday, do your week's content, and then schedule when it goes out. The I don't do that. And the reason I don't do that is because things change throughout the week. Things change throughout the day. Um, and I may not want to put something out that I had scheduled um, because circumstances may change. So uh, I don't do that. But, yes, you can schedule. Yeah, I think this goes to the planners, you know, people that want to plan, their, you know, to schedule everything. And I know Terry pretty well, actually. I know she's very much like, let me just plan it and do my thing. And, but you bring up a good point that if it's not, if it's, it's in the moment so much that you post, right? Relevant to what's happening right now. So it's hard, it's hard to schedule that. Um, so it's a good point. But I, I have used later, I tried using it. The, the benefit of it was that you could post from your desktop, but you were limited to three, I think it was three posts a week or something like that. You could pay, obviously, it looks like anything, you can pay for the pro version. Yes, we have Rebecca up on the screen. Hallelujah, everybody. That's what Hi, we're doing. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's just, with technology, things can always go wrong, but we have to kind of resolve them on the fly. But with the later, it's later.com, I believe, you go to, and then, the app is called Later on your phone. Uh, I tried oh. using it. I just didn't love it. But if you're a planner and that's the way you want to do it, I guess you could schedule some stuff. But like Chris said, oh, Rebecca, how do you feel about scheduling things ahead of time or planning your, your content for the week? Or do you just kind of go day by day and, and go with what you feel? Yeah, so I'm the same as Chris. I uh, do not plan my posts in advance. Um, I'd never even heard of the Later um program but hootsuite seems to be pretty popular for the people that like to do it can you hear me yeah okay um so i don't plan mine for the same reason i my schedule changes every day and i feel like i tried it i think once and it felt a little forced so i basically post things the way that whatever comes up that i like so if i happen to be Jamie, can you hear me yeah i can hear you okay uh, I don't have you on my screen, but I, and I have her frozen. Oh. <laughs> Refresh your browser, but I, the, the broadcast is perfect. I'm looking at it. All right. Perfect. All right. Okay. Sorry, Rebecca, awesome. so you basically said okay. you post when you feel it, right? I mean, it's so it's called social media. It's not called plan like a robot media, you know? And I think you can do timeless. Like if you have something coming up, so maybe it's a, holiday thing, you could post stuff like that, but I think those aren't gonna be as engaging as the in the moment, how you feel, what you're talking about. I think so much of like what you guys post and, and I see other people and myself, it's just like, oh man, yesterday I had these homemade cannolis in the office. <laughs> really? And I'm like, I gotta post about this. And I'm like, do you think I ate one, yes or no? Everybody freaking voted yes, so they think I have <laughs> But it's like, that was engagement. Like, you know, I, I had people voting on that. And then I did a video of me eating the cannoli, and then, uh, or is there something else that really, that really, really engaged me yesterday? Oh, my, our operations manager keeps saying realtor and realty. So we created a swear jar in our office now. If you say it, you've got to put money in it, right? And it's just stuff like that that happens throughout our day, which I think 
it's it's gold for your stories, right? Just telling what happens because people think all we do is buy and sell. Real, you know, we're just out there every day like we're an HGTV episode, and that's not the case. There's so much more behind the scenes that I think we need to share. Some of, some of the funniest stories that that have you know people that have engaged with is with, with when I'm you know out. Let's just say I'm going to a home inspection and the septic guy is there, and you know we're t- we're taking pictures of the septic tank and he's making jokes. And I mean, that's some of the funniest stuff that, that just gets so much traffic. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the mm-hmm. not so fun part of our, our job in real estate. So, um, you know, those, you are, those, are the good, those are the good moments to have. Yeah. They're unplanned. Yeah. You can't plan any of those. Yeah. The grass is really green over here. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, let's see what other questions we have here. So we have, is less more when writing content for a post, one sentence or less rule, or like a long dissertation. I'm gonna bring it up here. Hmm. It's less more, and I don't know, I didn't say that. Somebody, somehow that came up. <laughs> <laughs> so glitchy. Someone's this. using your. Yeah. So, what do you think about that? Want me to comment on that? or? Yeah, Chris, you can start. Um, so the biggest thing uh, that I that I see, you know, it, it depends. You know, when I'm putting up, if we sold a house and, you know, I get a picture of the family, I like to tell their story. Um, you know, when I tell their story, you know, people can relate. Um, so there's a little bit, little bit more to that um, because that's what everybody wants to hear. Everybody wants to hear their stories. Um, but when it comes to like a motivational post or something like that, I may only have one or two lines and just make sure that I have, you know, the hashtags that, that will, will get the traffic for that. But um, really when I'm trying to tell a story, that's when, you know, it's mainly for the families and, and certain situations, but um, just kind of keep them 50, 50. It really doesn't matter. Um, just as long as the content's good. Excellent. Rebecca. Yeah, I agree. So most of them I try to keep, um, one, maybe two sentences, because, you know, if you, people are scrolling through, sometimes they are just taking a quick break and they don't have the time to sit there and read a whole paragraph. But I agree if it, if it is something like that, or it, it is a family, or like sometimes I'll post a little bit more if I'm traveling, like when I went to Rochester for Technopalooza or something, I'll explain what I'm doing um, exactly. because it's just necessary for that post. But yeah, I try to keep them as short as possible. I've also found that adding emoticons in there, people really like that because it just kind of enhances a little bit, if you will, um, what you're saying. Mm-hmm. So um, I would agree the shorter the better, but there are some posts that, you know, it is better to add a little more verbiage in there. It's It sounds funny to say that. Some people just don't want to read a whole paragraph. The whole paragraph. Like, I mean, it's true. Way too much, man. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, let me see here. So we have a question from Sloan Roden. I'm going to bring this up. She says, Rebecca, do you use presets or specific filters to keep your aesthetic consistent? Yes. Hi, Sloan. I know Sloan pretty well. Okay. Um, so I do not. I actually mostly don't use filters on my posts. If I choose to edit them, I have separate apps that I like to use. Um, One of my favorites is called Snapseed. It's totally free and you can just edit your post really quickly on there. But I found that the filters, um, if you use them too much, they make it look like just too edited, over edited. Um, Yeah. And I, I just don't like that for my feed. So I usually don't. If I like to use a filter, maybe you can adjust how much of the filter you want on your post. Um, so I'll do that. Um, if you go on my feed, you'll notice I have a lot of, it's mostly colorful stuff, like vibrant colors. That's just something I chose for my brand. Um, so when I do that, it's separate in a separate application that I'll edit it a little bit. But as far as the filters, usually no, I don't. Okay. What about you, Chris? Uh, can you repeat that? So the question was, now I got to find it. Oh, do you use presets or specific filters to keep your aesthetic consistent? What a great question, by the way, Sloan. Um, not really. It all depends on, you know, the photo. Um, I'll use some filters here and there, but, you know, a lot of the times just your normal photo will get, you know, the best traffic. Hashtag no filter. 
No filter. <laughs> Hashtag no filter. <laughs> well, in the moment. So cool. Glad that um, Sloan brought it up because I think I've seen other Instagram experts say like, here, you know, go to go to Canva or go to this, and here's your your template that you use for everything that you post. And I think, like Rebecca said, it then creates like this too polished, professional, like commercial appeal, where we're like we want to appeal to be human rather than a business. Yeah, um, it's not it's not real. Yeah. Right, it's not real. Keep it yeah. real. And and I think you're you guys are both busy keeping it real. Um, you guys are both busy agents, and it's like. All that takes extra time. I don't get time to open a separate app. Oh, let me make it all pretty. And it, like, Jamie ain't got time for that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. and, uh, you guys don't either. So it's 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 good. Let me see what other. We have some really Let, great. I got a question. Um, yeah. I, the biggest question that I get is, what content? You know, what what do I do for content? Mm -hmm. um, that's the biggest question that I get from everybody. You know, what am I, you know, I want to start, but what do I, what do I do? What do I post? Um, yep. And, you know, I, I had, get, I, you know, I sent you exactly, exactly what I post. Um, and, you know, it, it's basically, I like to keep it, you know, a third personal, um, a third real estate. You know, I do like to keep the real estate in there. Um, and then a third just family or, you know, something something along the lines of other businesses or other, other things going on uh, throughout the community, basically community posts, motivational posts. And that's another third. Um, and, and honestly, you know, people go, well, I don't, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, just document your day. If you document your day, mm -hmm. the content will come to you. Um, and I always refer back to my kids. I have two kids, so I have content for days, all the time for months. <laughs> You know, so and it's just something you, you may have come across, you know, somebody may be talking or you may be listening to a podcast or you may be listening, you know, watching TV and you hear something that was would, you know, make you chuckle or, you know, make you think. Write that down, um, because that could be a post a month from now when you've got mm -hmm. something going on that that related to um, and it'll make you, you know, make you think I have a, a total notebook of all kinds of things that. I'm just dying to do for content, but I don't want to, I don't want to put out 10 things a day. So it's, you know, just document your day and you'll come across the content will come to you. That's the biggest thing. It will all, it will always come to you. Yeah. I, I really like that. During your day, you're like, man, this is so, this is so you're like, this is a funny moment or this, you just have to take those moments that we all have. Every single person has every single day and just be like, Oh, let me grab my phone and just take a picture or a video or a quick, whatever it is. Oh, Rebecca, how do you curate your content besides all the lovely coffee cups? <laughs> you must make a coffee that makes those <laughs> it looks so good. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> um, I agree with Chris, and I think that's one of the reasons why it's hard to plan your content ahead of time because how do you know where your day is going to go how do you know what moments you're going to run into and the ones that mean enough to you to want to post um so all of my stuff is just basically as it happens i um do a lot of stuff um outside of just buying and stuff or for my clients like as far as the speaking i'm super um engaged with my local board state and national so i love posting stuff about that um I do probably about a third personal to an extent, um, but it's just as things happen. It, I don't have certain categories of what I post because I. It's just basically what happens during my day, ends up on my feed. Similar theme for both of you, really. So for those of you who want that, and don't please don't plan. Okay, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do nine posts this week and three of them because Chris said a third. So three of those are gonna be and three this. No, don't. <laughs> this is a it's not an exact, you know, recipe where you're putting in an exact amount of this, that, or the other thing. But I think the point is to keep it, keep it relevant into your day. Don't plan it out too much. And I, I got a question here from Jennifer Ron, Cavanaugh Ronzo. She says, "Do you only use Insta?" And I know the answer for you guys, but you can answer it for yourselves. Do you only use Instagram or put separate content on Facebook? 
Um, I overlap. Uh, since I can't hear Rebecca, is it, oh, am I good right. to talk? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, <laughs> YouTube, you know, the website blog, you know, all of those things. So um, I, I try and keep the, the content almost the same, but it's uploaded differently because each platform has a different view viewing on things. So, um, you know, like I said, I, I have a, a good following on Instagram, but the majority of my, a lot of my, you know, engagement is on Facebook. So, um, a lot of the time I'm, I'm on all of them, um, for the most part. And I try and keep up with them and it's a long, it's, it's, a, <laughs> it makes it a long day, but at the same time, you know, for someone just starting out, I would pick one or two and just get really good at it um, and not try and spread yourself thin because then you get overwhelmed. And the biggest thing about getting overwhelmed is that, you know, you'll start to do it for two weeks and then uh, what, what happens is everybody quits. Um, and then you get upset. You say, oh, well, I, I'm not getting the followers. I'm not, you know, it's not working. Well, you've only tried it for two weeks. I, I've been on it for five years, you know, so it's, it takes time. And, you know, you just, you just don't spread yourself thin, just pick one or two and get really, really good at it. And then when you've got that, like a, you know, well-oiled machine, then move on to another platform. Rebecca? Yeah, I agree. So I um, mainly use Facebook and Instagram. I'm kind of the opposite where more of my stuff is from Instagram. Um, some of my posts will overlap between the two, but I have a different type of following on my Facebook than I do my Instagram. So it sometimes doesn't make sense for me to post certain things on one versus the other. Um, you can, if you want to save a little bit of time, you can connect your Instagram to your Facebook and you just push a button and it'll post on both platforms. Um, I don't do that just because like I said, I like to mix things up a little bit, but um, I agree with Chris. Pick two things that you really like. Focus on them. Don't try to force all social media platforms because you will spread yourself too thin. It'll take up way too much of your time. Um, and, you know, you'll get the most engagement from something that you really spend more of your time with and, and like the best. Yeah, so it, it kind of brings up a good point. You can't be a master of all right? Everybody's heard that, that saying, but do what you like. Like if you get on Instagram, you're like, ah, oh, I hate this. I hate the photos and the videos and all the really nice people. Maybe that's not for you, right? <laughs> go, go do something else. Go find another form of social media that you like better. But I think in real estate, if you had to pick two, I think Facebook and Instagram would be it. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm using our boardroom, which I have till 10 o'clock to kick me out and have a meeting. But anyway, um, Facebook and Instagram would probably be the top two. And then what do you think would be the next one? I think YouTube, because that's still social media. But what do you guys say? 100%. Mm -hmm. All right. I like that. <laughs> yeah. 100%. I, ha I hate myself on video. I'm trying to get over that. But um, my team and I did talk about doing a YouTube thing next year. So I think that'll okay. be our next one, too. So let's, let's bring it to video then, because... All roads lead to video for me. Um, with IGTV, what, what do you think is going to happen? Because we've talked about sold predictions. Um, what do you think is going to happen in 2019 with IGTV? Because I think my opinion is if it was a standalone product, it would be dead already. But it is linked to the whatever 600 plus million Instagram users and your existing following. Like if they follow you on your page, they automatically follow you on IGTV. Um, I guess Rebecca, you're not going to answer this too much because you're not on there yet, but you will mm -hmm. be because you're going to be doing a lot yeah. of videos in 2019. Um, Chris, I know you're, you're repurposing some of your live stuff to the IGTV. Yes. Um, I'm taking pretty much the majority of my lives and just uploading them. Um, I haven't actually gone live on IGTV yet. Um, I haven't quite ventured into that, and that's coming up in the new year to be able to do that. It's basically just like YouTube, having your, you know, having your own show, um, you know, with the Thursday morning thoughts that we do, we're going to start turning that into the IGTV, um, you know, and that's going to go across YouTube. Like we had discussed a couple weeks ago, 
taking all of that and, and really, really getting involved into actually having the real estate show. Um, so I, I just, and you're right, it would be dead if it was on its own, but mm -hmm. Instagram is, is really the number one platform, um, you know, and then, you know, going into, into YouTube, but, um, IGTV is, is where it's at. There's actually a, a lot of following on there. Um, and all of your people that follow you normally, uh, you know, you can invite them to your, to your IGTV stuff. So, um, it's going to be great, great platform in the year to come. So then let me ask you this. I didn't know. So they're going to be able, you'll be able to live stream on IGTV yeah. in 2019. You'll be able to live stream on IGTV. Is it just for big, big shots like you guys or for like just regular folks? No, regular <laughs> folks. Okay. You just made my Christmas. It's a Christmas miracle, everybody. <laughs> it's like, like right now I'm live streaming on my Instagram, right? But I know that that's only going to stay on for 24 hours. And then with Android, there's no way that I can, there's a couple yeah, but ways. You can, you can, you know, like I said, you can take, you can still take your, right now you can take the Facebook and upload it. So it stays there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I could do that, but I mean, it's right. Like, You're yeah. gonna have to pick one of the one of the two. You're either gonna have to live stream it on your regular Instagram, or you're gonna have to live stream it on IGTV. Right, and if 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 it stays on IGTV, then the answer would be simple for me. Right, I, I'd be on IGTV. So now every single in 2019, you heard it here first, folks. In 2019, every single millennial who talks and J Man's Ed talks will be simulcasted, will be going live on Facebook, and then we'll be live on IGTV, so then they can both stay there as long as anybody would want them to be there, because it's you know, easier to access. I hated that about the live videos for IGTV, or for uh, regular Instagram. All right, so yeah. any other predictions? I, I want to adhere to you guys' time. You, you're busy. Now Chris has an appointment at 10.30. Anything else you want to add, like it's super important for people to realize uh, in 2019 in regards to Instagram? Um, I would just say, you know, it is becoming a huge um, lead generator, at least for me and my team. And I know a lot of other people that I've talked to, especially I'll go and talk at these seminars. And then I get people that come back to me and they're like, I've just gotten all this business. Thank you so much. I grow my following. So I would recommend if you aren't on there yet, just create a profile and just kind of go with it. Um, when I started, I kind of just was looking around to see what other realtors were doing and just took a little bit of what they were doing and made it my own. So if you haven't explored it yet, I would definitely recommend um, doing that. And a little more on hashtags because we didn't really get to talk about them. I just think they're super important to mention. Um, try to include hashtags in all of your posts. Uh, it's a great way to, for people to be able to search you and try to come up with one hashtag that maybe is for you specifically. So I have Rebecca Donatelli team. So that way those posts all have that and they're all linked to my team. Um, that's what I would say for next year. Okay. Awesome. Uh, what was the question? Sorry. The question was any, anything else you want to add as far as, you know, 2019 tips and tricks of, of how somebody could be better with Instagram? Yeah, and I didn't get to hear Rebecca because uh, for some reason we don't. I don't have that connection. But um, did she talk about uh, direct messaging? No. Okay, so if if you're if you're not direct messaging people who have a big following within your space or something around your space, you know, for us it's real estate. So either realtors or you know home builders, inspectors, whatever the case may be, um, or just people around your community that have a really big following, you know, message them and see if you can, you know, bring value to them to where, you know, you can, you can basically collaborate. Um, you know, it's, it's so much better when you can, you know, trying to grow something when you can grow together. Um, so I know direct messaging to influencers within the space is you should be doing that a year ago, but, if you haven't started, start doing that in 2019, you know, message 10 to 15 people a day um, that have a, you know, have a very good following or very, even not even a, a big following, but good content um, that you think, you know, that you could bring value to um, with nothing in return, but, you know, see where that goes. Um, but yeah, direct messaging, you know, especially to influencers, that, that will definitely help your following. I like that. That's a good, and I'm not sure, 
I, that might have been how Rebecca and I met, or I, I don't know. Like, I think I was following you on Instagram, and I was like, "Yo, I want to do a live uh, interview with you." And you were, I think that I think that's. I think that is how we met. Actually, is um, direct messaging, like yeah. a, almost a year ago, maybe. Yeah. And yeah, I would definitely agree with Chris um, messaging people and also other agents around the country. You can get so many awesome referrals from them. In fact, Candace on my team um, found me on Instagram and messaged me. And then she ended up coming on my team last year and, and she's awesome. So um, connecting with agents, throw them a 25% referral fee, get that listing, get that buyer. Um, I would totally agree with Chris on that. So in closing, Chris actually has put together a one sheet of what his, is it the daily content or just, just tips and tricks. That's what I'm going to call it. So if you message my Facebook page that you should be on right now, if you're watching this, if you message me directly on my Facebook page, stager, the number one, okay. My messenger bot will auto reply with that sheet so that you'll have it. And then what we're going to do, uh, Rebecca's working on hers and we can post that in the comments. Um, but if you also want to message me for that, just put Rebecca in, in the message and then I'll reply back with that, with that one sheet. But let's, um, in order, I'm going to put both of them, both of their Instagram handles in the comments. But why don't you, if you're watching this also put your Instagram, you know, so it'd be HTTP, semicolon slash, slash, Instagram.com slash, whatever your username is, would be the easiest way for us to do it. So you can click on it. We'll go to your Instagram. We can follow you, so we can create a follow train. Awesome. <laughs> can I can I give one uh, one tip before I go? Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, it's good to get a group of ten to fifteen of your friends, so to speak. Um, and we do exactly that, not necessarily a follow train, but a comment train. So, um, mm -hmm. we put it, we, in, in the messaging, we have, you know, 10 or 15 of us. And, uh, every time we put up a post, we basically share it to that, uh, that group, we call it scratch our backs. And, um, so when we post it, we send it to the group and within, you know, hopefully within 10 minutes, but everybody works. So it's kind of tough, but within 10 minutes everybody either will, will will like the post and also comment on the post. So mm -hmm. that just generates very quick activity for the post. And then when you, when you go in and you hit the search button, we've seen where we've created um, our posts. Basically when it says for you, we've seen a lot of our posts within that top search bar, uh, all those top search posts. So, you know, get 10 or 15 people, you know, send a post to each one of them in the messaging and let them all comment. And we do that for each other. And, you know, you'll see a lot of my stuff has the same people that are commenting. Um, but some of that is is really directed towards just, it's just a little secret, um, just to get the post moving so that it reaches more more people. Um, so that's one thing that we do. That's, that's a, a little tip and trick uh, that we do. Um, and the other thing is just be consistent. Be consistent, keep doing it. So Right now, you should be planning for 2019 if you haven't already. So social media should be a big part of it, Instagram especially. Uh, if you want to comment IG3, that's IG3 in the comments below, uh, you'll get subscribed to our Messenger bot. And I'm going to be doing every other week. This is how it's going to work. So next week, I'm going to be doing another Millennial Who Talks with a real estate rock star from somewhere in the world telling their story. Rebecca and Chris are both on there. And then the week after that, I'm going to do another Ed Talk, which will, will probably be on YouTube. I have two YouTube influencers on talking about their tips and tricks. And my only goal in any of this is to help our fellow realtors. Like I'm not going to, at the end, I'm not going, hey, I want to sell you guys some coaching, right? Or, hey, if you buy my thing. No, it's not, it's not what it's about. I think every, you know, the, the rising tide raises all bolts, you know, like all of us helping each other uh, to be better, especially younger agents younger now i'm going to be 40 like chris i have to add an er at the end of my young but that's that's all for now and thank you rebecca and chris for being on the show we greatly appreciate you and please follow these folks and have a merry christmas and a happy new year whatever holidays you're celebrating merry bye christmas. happy holidays